because I was standing just across from the station during its construction. And all you could see were the main spine beams. And I was stood there waiting for the, for the lights to change and there were two guys there. And then, you know, one of them points to the other and he just looks over and he said, that's a funny place for a roller coaster. You know, in that kind of Australian way, they were joking with it. But actually, to me, what it said was they were beginning to adopt it. The existing station was very tired, very utilitarian. In fact, it asked all of its passengers to approach the station uh, in very constrained tunnels uh, and to pop out in the middle of each uh, island platform. It just felt like you were, I don't know, in like 1880s America, rather than being in the heart of the cultural centre of Australia. One of the great ambitions was actually to make the new railway station a true and integrated and loved uh, part of the city. So the idea was very much that there was a direct relationship between the street and the concourses within the station. Passengers can come at the station from everywhere. In order to do that, we convinced the client and the government that uh, we should relocate Platform 1 entirely and that we should push all of the terminating platforms further north. Moving the tracks back and creating that covered public space was really the key move that we made. We decided to make the station an overall roof for a couple of reasons. One is it gets really, really hot. It's 40 degrees plus a lot of the time, and shade is at a premium within Australia. But secondly, I think it was really important for Melbourne to have something that would be good to look at, that would create an identity, that would create this element of public space. These big railway stations, they're actually civic spaces, and that's how we always think about them. There are electric and diesel trains within the station, and getting rid of the diesel is an incredibly important thing. We tried to create a kind of an arched overall roof, if you like, so that it could capture the diesel with a hole at the top so that the diesel fumes can be naturally ventilated. The problem with that is, is that the diesel can move up and down and move within the shed, so we didn't want that to happen. We wanted to deal with each train separately. So I naturally then moved on to, well, actually, why don't you slightly change that and create almost like an upturned canoe, if you like, a dome that holds the diesel fumes and a collection of those together. What we were then worried about, that if the two domes were together, you might get fumes going from one and straight into the other. So what we then is, we offset those domes. You create this kind of very sinuous landscape, a bit like a mogul field if anyone goes skiing. It looks a bit like that, uh, or sand dunes even. The roof is a breathing membrane that allows warm air to come through, through naturally seeping up from the locomotives, from the interior space, and move through the cavity of the roof, past the soffit panels, into a cavity, and then out of these ridge caps at the top. We wanted to use the effects of the prevailing southwesterly winds that kind of sweep across the, the roof. You've got the wind getting quicker as it goes up. What that does is it creates a positive pressure outside, negative inside, and that naturally pulls out the diesel fumes without need for any mechanical ventilation. Because the lot high-rise residential blocks were being developed, we couldn't have air conditioning units or plant, a mechanical plant, on top of the roof. We had to make this um, interesting to look at from, from above. It truly had a fifth elevation. The state and the federal government had really wants to 
push Australians away from the car. I think they wanted something that was a, a kind of poster boy for that, uh, for that move towards mass transit. It had to actually change the psyche of the user and it had to make the whole journey more enjoyable. And I certainly believe the station itself has become part of the, the you know the grain of the city.